Hello, Pastor Joe here, Holy Spirit Ranch Ministries, for our Sunday 1 p.m. message broadcasting from Jasper, Georgia, USA. Uh, we're five minutes late. I apologize for that. Uh, to, 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 the title of today's message is Let Anyone Who's Thirsty Come. And that's from uh, Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. And thank you, everyone, for being here. And let me pray to get started. Father God, I always ask this. Please use me as a willing, open, imperfect vessel. Use me. And as I speak, Holy Spirit, please speak through me. Let it be you, not me. Father God, I, I pray that today's message will help people, will draw people, help draw people to you by your, the power of your Holy Spirit and will help believers and unbelievers alike, whoever is listening, to encourage people to come to you because you love us all so much. I thank you in the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you everyone for being here, family, friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, and members of the Holy Spirit Ranch team that help us serve, prayer warriors. Thank you everyone for being here, everyone. Um, well, this Wednesday, uh, Mike and I, Pastor Mike and myself, went to uh, Brandon Hills. We went to the farmer's market and bought cases and cases of fresh fruit. And we uh, gave a, a Thanksgiving blessing in Brandon Hills. And it was just awesome. And also, um, and thank you for the people that help us do this. And also, um, um, Arthur and Joanne and, and the Kids Club in the uh, Philippines, Holy Spirit Ranch Ministries, Philippine kids club uh our youth our college graduating teachers there are um, this past saturday yesterday was their first actual um day that they were giving lessons in math and english and in jesus to young four to i believe four to seven year olds so uh, things are happening thank you father god today's message you know after Thanksgiving in America, after Thanksgiving, it's a kickoff to the holiday season. And the holiday season originally started with Christmas and then going into New Year's and all the partying that goes on, celebrations that go on. And they started something many years ago, but when I was a kid, they didn't have this Black Friday. Interesting name, Black Friday. And the day after Thanksgiving, which has been an amazingly beautiful holiday as far as family and friends getting together and just sharing food and joy and love together, and had to turn commercial. So Friday is Good Friday. It's a commercial spending frenzy. And that's the kickoff of the holiday season. All the stores do Christmas shopping stuff, gifts, houses decorate, some houses it's the kickoff of the season. I'm not putting anyone down. The season to celebrate. This is the season to celebrate the impossible. This is the season to celebrate the impossible that becomes possible with God. Because things that are impossible with man are possible with God. And the season we're celebrating should be the celebration of everything that was impossible that God made possible. Life itself. But we're celebrating, we should be celebrating the birth of Christ. And of course, Christ, that's the birth of Christ. If you're not a believer, the birth of Christ celebrated Christmas. Christ existed before, in the beginning he existed. In the beginning was the word, he was with God, he was God. He was in the beginning with God. That's from John 1, Genesis 1, 26. And we, just God's, and we created men in our image and our likeness. That's God and Jesus. Jesus from the very beginning. This is, we're celebrating the birth of Jesus in the human body. When, when he came from heaven to this earth to seek and save the lost and to defeat the works of the enemy. So this is the celebration of the season of the impossible. Because, because when mother, when, when, when Mary, not mother Mary, when Mary 
the mother of Christ was pregnant, it was not by her husband, it was not by Joseph, it was by the Holy Spirit. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. And angels spoke to Mary and spoke to Joseph. Angels. And the life of Jesus. One miracle after another. And when for the three years of his ministry, from 30 years of age to 33, the blind would see, the lame would walk, the dead would rise. And when the enemy killed Jesus, crucified the Son of God, three days later, the God's Holy Spirit rose him from the dead. This is the season of miracles. The celebration is the celebration of the impossible being made possible by God. You know, Luke chapter 18, verse 27. And this is when, I'm going to go to verse 24. This is when Jesus said, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Now those who heard this said then, who in the world can be saved? And Jesus replied, what is impossible for people is possible with God. Now I'm not talking about the whole story here, what the conversation that was happening with Jesus, but He's saying, you know, it's impossible, you know, for the very wealthy to sometimes humble himself to God. He's saying, what's impossible with man is possible with God. Everything in this season that we celebrate, that we should be celebrating, are impossibilities that were made possible by God. When Jesus was risen from the dead, that's impossible. God's Holy Spirit did the impossible and rose him from the dead. That's the celebration. And we're not talking about the whole, I'm just talking about part of this. Of course, the celebration of Christmas is God giving us Jesus, the birth of Christ into a human body. But right now we're talking about, what I'm talking about is we just enter this season of, of, of three weeks, three and a half weeks, the season of celebration. And, and some of it's really good where families get together and they take the time, they travel to love each other and to be nice to each other, even to give to each other. But we were very, very sidetracked by the commercialism. We're very, very, we've really gone down a road very, very too far with Santa Claus and shopping frenzy and lost sight of what we're celebrating. We're celebrating the impossible being made possible. What an amazing celebration. So much bigger than shiny things in the stores. So much bigger than the food we eat. So much bigger than the decorations that we do, which has not the Christmas trees and decorations, has nothing to do with the miracle, the celebration, the season of absolute miracles. So. Beware of a couple of things here, everyone. Be, this is what God gave me, okay? Beware of this sometimes emotionally exhausting time. I'm not, I'm not being negative here. I'm talking about many people during the, the holiday season, many people are emotionally exhausted and stressed and because of, of so much to do. And, and shopping and busyness and waiting on lines and the mayhem that goes on and getting into debt when they shouldn't and know they shouldn't or sometimes not having the money to buy things for their children or their dear ones and, and wishing they could, but they're forgetting that, that gift and all that stuff. Yes, it's awesome to give, love your child with a gift, but not a whole room full. What the heck does that have to do with Jesus Christ? We're supposed to be celebrating Christmas, the birth of Christ in, Amer in, this, in, this, in this world. And, and, and what, there's a whole room full of stuff for the kids? They don't have a clue what's going on, most of them. 
they think it's all about them. It's about Jesus. We're celebrating the greatest gift that could ever be given. Jesus Christ. My God, God gave us his son. So I'm not knocking, celebrating, giving something to the kids, enjoying. Especially children have nothing, you know. It's, it's, they have nothing. When they're missing a parent, they have no parents. It's awesome. Love them with, some, with something. Not, okay. And we, there's also a time of, of a lot of, during this time of year, there's a lot of self-reflection. People just start looking at their lives themselves, and sometimes it gets difficult, the self-reflection. And it's also a time of sometimes greater depression for some people. So the holiday season could be a very difficult time for some people. There could be a, a, sometimes people are lonely, and they are alone during this time when everyone's getting together and having parties and celebrating. And this could be a time of loneliness. And sometimes people, sometimes people are alone and feeling lonely, even amongst their families, even amongst their friends. Sometimes older people are feeling neglected or not useful. And sometimes younger people, especially teenagers with hormones and things happening in their life in an unstable world, sometimes they could be with their family and feel, feel very alone and not understanding everything that's going on. So it's, it's a time of loneliness for some people. It's also, right now, a time of fear for people because of the COVID not seeming to go away and new versions of it, new strains of it coming. And people are typically, as humans, we're afraid of the unknown. We don't often welcome the unknown. We're afraid of it. So there's a spirit of fear trying to grip people during this season also. So with all this said, instead of all this, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate the season, the season, the celebration of miracles. And these miracles, the impossible may make, be made possible by God is so much bigger than anything else going on. Um, Matthew chapter 19. And this is going back to the same story that we were talking about um, in, Matt, in, in Luke, chapter 19, verse 26. And, and this is the same story when he's speaking to his disciples about um, harder for a, a rich man to come into the kingdom that a camel through a, a needle. Uh, verse 26. Jesus looked at them intently and said, humanly speaking, it is impossible, but with God, everything is possible. This is Jesus speaking. He's saying, humanly speaking, it's impossible. But with God, everything is possible. If everyone, if we focus, you and I, and we enter this season, the Christmas holiday season. If we right now enter it celebrating what's possible with God that's not possible with man around us, in us, in our own lives, we could really embrace the season with joy. We could be a light to a dark world and doesn't mean you can't shop. It doesn't mean you can't bless people. But we don't need to get crazy with it. We need to get crazy with the celebration of the miracle of life. The miracle of Jesus being born as a baby, coming from heaven to this earth to seek and save the lost. That's what Christmas is about. That's what the, that's what the season started as. Before it got too commercial. I'm not knocking people in business and making money. We need to keep our focus what the great gift is. And the title of today's message, right? If you're thirsty, come. Matthew chapter 55. The prophet Isaiah. 
thousands of years ago, speaking about the coming of Christ. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 1. Matter of fact, Isaiah was the most quoted prophet from Jesus, I believe. He quoted Isaiah more than any other prophet. Is anyone, this is what Christmas is about, is anyone thirsty? Come and drink. Even if you have no money, come take your choice of wine or milk. It's all free. Why spend your money on food that does not give you strength? Why pay for food that does you no good? Listen to me and you will eat what is good. You will enjoy the finest food. Come to me with your ears wide open. Listen and you will find life. Verse 6. Seek the Lord while you can. Seek the Lord while you can find him. Call on him now while he is near. He's speaking about Jesus. Before Jesus became a human being on earth. Before, before Mary gave birth to Christ. Made pregnant by God's Holy Spirit. Season of miracles. Miracles. The miracle of life. John chapter 4. When... Uh, <coughs> when uh, Jesus was going through Samaria, I love this story, and he met a Samaritan woman. He was on his way back home, and he was cutting through Samaria. And I don't think too many Jews would go through there because Samaritans and Jews didn't get along. And he met a woman at Jacob's well, a Samaritan woman, and he said, you know, I'm thirsty. Could you get me some water? She's, she's also like, what's he doing here? He's not supposed to be here talking to me. So, huh? And, and yeah, thirsty, the, the well is really deep. What do you want me to do for you, you know? And they're having this conversation. And, um, <clears throat> you know, she says, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me, and I would give you living water. Then she says, but sir, I don't have a rope or a bucket, and the well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? <laughs> and he and goes, in verse 13, Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again, but those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within giving them eternal life. Please, sir, the woman said, give me this water. And of course, then he speaks to her about all the um, husbands she's had and the man she's living with. He read her, he read her clock, so to speak. And she was like, this, this, this must be the Messiah. And I love this part of the story. He used her, this immoral woman at the well, he used her to spread the the gospel to spread the good news of, of a life through him because she went back in town and told everybody and they all got together and many people became believers of Christ through the Samaritan woman at the well but back to back to the, the, the main line here if anybody if you only knew the gift God has for you people that are, that's what this season's about to celebrate the season if, if you only knew the gift that God has for you. And if you're a believer, same thing. If you only knew the, God, the gift God has for you, you might have given yourself to Christ, but we forget. I know I'm always reminding all of us, including myself, what, as children of God, as part of the royal priesthood, who we are, as imperfect as we are, even with the struggles that we have, who we are, the great gift God has for us when he puts his Holy Spirit to live in us. When he gives us eternal life, when he calls us his children, we can call him Abba Father. When Jesus calls us not just, when Jesus calls us friends and brothers and sisters, do we know the gift that he has for us? If you're not a believer, like the Samaritan woman at the well, the immoral woman at the well, the imperfect woman at the well, Jesus, says if you, Jesus said, if you only know the gift that God has for you, gift of life.
gift that you can't die. When your body wears out, you get to go to heaven. Someday you get a new body, spiritual body made by God's hands, fashioned like that of Christ. <laughs> if you only knew the gift that God has for you. Sorry, you I heard my dog stuck under something here. You all right, Rusty? Sorry. And if, if you're not a believer, he said to this immoral woman that according to customs, he wouldn't even be speaking to her as a Jew, to a Samaritan woman at the well, I think at noontime. If you only knew the gift that God has for you. And if you're not a believer of Christ, Forget all the lies that you've heard that the enemy puts out there. Forget all about doubt, the doubt that you have. Don't be afraid of Christ. Don't be afraid of God. Not like that. He loves you and he wants you to be, be able to call him Father. He has a great gift of life to give you. Receive it. Receive it. If you're not a believer of Christ and you feel God's Holy Spirit, it's not me talking, but you feel his spirit drawing on you. If that's his spirit pulling you to him, pulling you, saying, I want you to be my child, but only through my son, Jesus. Look what I've done for you. Look what I've given you. To be my child, you must come through his blood. Just say yes to Jesus. I want you to be my Lord and my brother and my friend and my boss. Ask him to come into your heart. Ask forgiveness of your sins. Repent. Great word. Repent. Great, great word. Repent. It means change your ways and you can't do that without God. So you ask forgiveness of your sins. With all your dirt, man, we got some dirt. With all your dirt, you take it to God and say, help clean me up. I want to change the way I look at this world and myself and life. I want to change my thinking, but I can't do it for me. And he will. He will. Sometimes stuff, some stuff is immediate. The second you give your life to God, some stuff is a lifetime of work because we're all work in progress. You do this and you become a child of God and you receive the miracle gift that we celebrate this season. I'm going to end with Revelation chapter 22. You know, it's really cool. You know, beginning of the Bible, first book of the Bible, Genesis, you know, creation and, and everything else. In the very beginning of Genesis, you know, Genesis 1, 26, and we create man, our image, our likeness. Jesus is right there with God. And in the very last book of the Bible, Jesus is speaking. In the very last chapter of the very last book of the Bible in Revelation, Jesus is speaking. And verse 16, 22, verse 16. This is Jesus speaking. And he's speaking about Revelation. You know, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this message for the churches. So an angel went to John, and John wrote Revelation. When, if you're not a believer and you don't know this, when John, he was on the island of Patmos, I think I'm pronouncing it right, in, in Greece. And they tried to kill John. They killed all the other disciples. They couldn't kill John, so they stuck him in a cave on an island. And that's where he wrote Revelation, in a cave. The place still exists, the cave that he wrote this from. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this message for the churches. I am both the source of David and the heir to his throne and the bright morning star. Now this is John. The spirit and the bride say, that's the Holy Spirit and us, the church. 
the spirit and the bride say, come. Let anyone who hears this say, come. Let anyone who is thirsty, come. Let anyone who desires drink freely from the water of life. I'm going to read this again. The spirit and the bride say, come. Let anyone who hears this say, come. So in other words, when you hear God's word, God's not just saying the church and the Holy Spirit saying, come. The Holy Spirit draws you, come. But he's also saying, when we hear this message, we are to tell people, come and drink freely of the everlasting water of life. Let anyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who desires drink freely from the water of life. That's the celebration. So as we enter, you know, we have our customs here, you know, after Thanksgiving, the holiday season. Let's, all of us, celebrate the impossible, the miracles that man cannot do at all. We're trying, but we can't. The miracles that God can only do. That's the great celebration here. Keep your focus on that. Everyone. Let's, let's keep our focus on that. And let's tell people, come and drink freely of the water of life. Thank you all. Thank you. The message is finished. God bless you all. Uh, check us out on Holy Spirit Ranch Ministries org and facebook youtube subscribe keep it keep keep up with us i love you all god bless you bye